once the transport is situated, it's all uh, rebuilt, ready to go. I uh, change out the uh, the caps. Um, one thing not mentioned here is uh, the speed adjustment, which I went through. You want to set the speed to plus or minus 1.5% uh, using the standard alignment tape. Uh, you can do that with a frequency counter. Um, here I am recapping. I've changed out all the orange caps. And some of the larger electrolytics, the the, uh, the filter capacitors and the power supply get replaced. Put in larger ones uh, for a little better filtering. I do not replace all of the capacitors if uh, the machine is performing well, which then this one is. So here I am soldering in new caps and replacing the electrolytic capacitors. I went from 2200 microfarads to 3300. A little bit larger is okay. Actually, possibly better. Um, things have advanced over the years, so uh, the same size, physical size of capacitor has actually more capacity than than many of the older older ones did. Here I am resoldering the filter caps. Now we're going at some head alignments. This is a track alignment tape. It's a replica of the original Nakamichi head height alignment tape. You play that tape and you adjust the head height for minimum signal in both channels. It's actually a full track recording with uh, two tracks, two narrow tracks that are erased so that you can get the head height precise. And now that you've adjusted the head height, the azimuth is wrong, so you, <laughs> you get out your azimuth alignment tape and you adjust the azimuth. I'm using uh, an older oscilloscope for that. It's a two-channel scope. I have uh, channel one and two uh, connected to left and right. And the scope set in XY mode to compare the phase of the two channels. And I'm playing a 10 kilohertz alignment tape and uh, adjusting the azimuth for zero phase difference, which, which was indicated by a diagonal line on the oscilloscope. So there we go. Azimuth is set correctly now. After that, I look at uh, look at speed, playback level, and uh, begin adjusting record levels and record bias to to obtain uh, the correct level and a flat frequency response. And um, well, what you end up doing is uh, making multiple recordings and playing them back. Um, and here we go.